Thank you, Samir. I'll try probably unsuccessfully to replace Rechko, who had to leave earlier. Uh, thank you for such a thought-provoking uh, lecture. I'm sure there will be a lot of questions and comments. Please. Hvala lijepo, moj ime je Nenad Klapčić i htio bi upozoriti upravo na ovu potrebu internacionalizacije potpore pokretima koji nastaju. Nažalost, u Hrvatskoj je puno lakše stvoriti Facebook grupu koja će poduprijeti jednu ili drugu preljubničku stranu u Big Brotheru, nego stvoriti Facebook grupu koja će poduprijeti prosvjetnike u Egiptu ili upozoriti na ekonomsku situaciju u Kongu ili na neke druge, ukazati na neke druge bolne točke. S druge strane, odgovor možda baš na ovu konferenciju koja se dobro naziva subversivnom, što je jedna vrsta etikete, jer biti subversivan, očito i u očima monopolističkog kapitalizma znači tražiti preraspodilu moći. I zato treba biti oprezan sa tom etiketom, ali odgovor je čini se stigao u glasilu monopolističkog kapitalizma u ljudi ekonomistu, koji predviđa da će 2100. godine 13%, sam svega 13% ljudi živjeti u državama, u srednje bogate državama. Uspoređujući to sa 1950. godinom, kad je 38% svjetsko stanovništvo živjelo u srednje bogate državama. Međutim, svako je pitanje kako stvoriti kontramoć tu, toj, tom monopolitičkom kapitalizmu danas, Internacionalizacija sigurno te podrške je važna, ali da li postoje instrumenti koji će tu internacionalizaciju podupreti? Hvala vam na ovom na meni iznimno važnom izlaganju i htjela bih vam postaviti slično pitanje, ali na drugi način. Kada ste vi 1985. godine napisali vašu knjigu, a tiče se upravo koncepta D-Linking, zanima me na koji način taj koncept možete primijeniti danas i da li je primijenjiv 
i na koji način na primjeru Egipta u odnosu na južnoameričke zemlje, u odnosu na teorije koje su vezane uz koncepti linking od primjerice Walter Mignola i nekih drugih teoretičara vezano za južnoameričku situaciju. Three questions are indeed very, very strongly related, and I can try to make a collective comment. I have no answer, no blueprint to give to you, because it would be absolutely in con contradiction with my approach to analyzing. We can analyze or try to analyze without the guarantee of being uh, correct um, how a system works, but um, the alternative um, is, is the product of praxis. That is a combination of theory and practice, uh, which, uh, which uh, is very hard to, uh, to formulate uh, in advance completely, but ingredients of it should be done. I think that monopoly capital, particularly generalized monopoly capital cannot be overcome without a first step, which is nationalizing. Um, you see, when there was the, uh, the financial breakdown, banks were nationalized for a short period and then given back to the private sector. That is amusing. You nationalize the, the losses and you keep the profits uh, privatized, but nationalized. And I think more and more people will be aware of that in everywhere, including in Europe, uh, that it has started with areas where privatization uh, has uh, started to be rejected for public services, for water, and perhaps a little later it could come to other areas like housing, but but nationalization is not the end of the world. It is the very first step. The target of the process should lead to socialization. It's a very complex thing. Socialization, what is offered by the system is socialization through the market. And the alternative is socialization through democracy, which the actual, the really existing socialism attempted to do in a timid way during the revolutionary periods, but very soon came to a blind alley precisely because of the, uh, uh, of the hostility of the most uh, advanced societies in good part. You had in Yugoslavia uh, the experience of self-management which was not all negative, as has been thought, uh, in spite of the fact that indeed it did not move ahead, but went into blind alleys because it was associated to market in, and to the uh, uh, federal constitution of the country and to the opening uh, a little later, towards the end of the Tito uh, regime and after Tito, um, in, in, in a way which can be discussed and which we can see. Into. So the process of socialization is very complex. There are a lot of good literature on the subject uh, and modern one. I refer only to, because I read it recently, a, a book in French of Tony Andreani on Le socialiste du XXIe siècle, socialist for the 21st century, where this debate is clearly open with how to combine more democracy in the management of the enterprise with more democracy in the relation between the enterprise and other, and the local society and the nation and the region, etc. Um, there are, there is. But I think that the debate, and this kind of debate should be continued and open much more widely than they are. But simultaneously, um, these debates 
if they are not connected with real experiences, will not lead very far. And there are real experiences. Now, the question was put whether Bolivia or other countries in Latin America are models, uh, viable models. They are not viable models, for sure. But they are attempts and steps ahead. Instead of the word revolution, which is a very strong word, huh? I prefer revolutionary advances. And I think that what happened from Russia, China, to Eastern Europe, at least to those countries who did the revolution by themselves, like Yugoslavia, huh? um, were revolutionary advances. Hmm? Revolutionary advances. Which means that according to internal conditions, but also to the external, and this is the link with globalization, um, uh, can make more advance or can be led into a blind alley. What has happened with the 20th century is that due to internal limitations, particularly the question of democracy, Plato Senso, but also external, the hostility of the West, uh, led to blind alleys, which finally led to where it led. Now, this is why with relation, in relation with the globalization, you are right. I wrote on the linking since uh, now 40 years at least, and perhaps more, 50 years. Huh? Well, delinking to me is not uh, migrating into the moon. It is, uh, it is creating the maximal margin of maneuver that you can have with respect to the rest of the world, to the capitalist dominant world, which is always relative, always limited and relative. Of course, it depends on many things. One, for sure, it depends on if you are China, you are not Guinea-Bissau. Eh? Uh, the size is, has its importance. But not only the size, the internal social composition and the relation of power system to the society, which cannot be uh, uh, summarized in good or bad, socialist or capitalist. It's a much, much more complex than that in all cases. Now, uh, for a country like Egypt today, and this is a matter being started, start to be discussed, the margin may seem quite small. I think it's much wider than it appears, depending on, uh, on the, uh, the relation between power and, and, and society and social and popular classes. Um, this, you know, I have been a technocrat in my life also, not only a, an activist, both simultaneously, but also a technocrat. Eh? in planning, um, and I, um, I think that um, the margin is far wider than what usually one as a technocrat sees, eh? because one as a technocrat is compelled by the short run and precisely the conditions, while as an activist you see that struggle to change the conditions you don't change a condition 100%. I prefer the Chinese wording. 70% is full victory. <laughs> there are nothing better than 70%. Uh, it's all, already fantastic. Huh? And even if you do 50%, it's not bad. So I don't want to put figures and give uh, uh, <coughs> figures, but I think that in Latin American countries, advances have been achieved. Now, but they remain precarious, more precarious in a country like Venezuela, which is still, which has to be constructed. It has been destroyed by oil. The country is importing everything until now. So reconstructing a country is not an affair of a few years. It's much more, um, much, much more viable, if we use that term, in a country like Brazil, because it, among other advantages, it's a large country, 
it cannot be bombed easily by the US, <laughs> as Honduras, um, and it has natural resources, but it has also the limitation of strong reactionary forces within the society. Bolivia is not as geographically, it's not a small country, uh, but uh, in population it's not a large country. It has natural resources, but it has also uh, a better, a more favorable set of political and social forces. So it's always like that. I mean, you delinking, the, there is no blueprint for delinking. Delinking is from one country to another, from one period to another, a set of measures that you can take. The book of, again, one book in French of um, Nikonov on Sortons de l'Euro, Let Us Move Out of the Euro, which uh, would not be very popular in Croatia, I think, uh, debates discuss the matter in a very concrete way for European countries. And not only for France, but for European countries, basically of Western capitalist developed Europe, say, and not Eastern Europe. Um, therefore, delinking is, uh, is really the subject for debates. But again, um, while academic, I don't like the word academic, let's call it scientific research, uh, serious research, must a debate must be conducted. If it is not supported or related to uh, popular struggles and to changing balance of forces, it will not lead to uh, important results. Poštovani gospodine Sant, ako pođemo od pretpostavke i od uvjerenja da je sadašnji stadij civilizacije koje je nazivan kapitalizam, u ovom stadiju ga možemo šire opisati kao fundamentalni, korporativni, neoliberalni kapitalizam, ako je to maksimum, ako je to vrhunac ovoga društvenog oblika uređenja koji polazi od toga da je kapital u zagradi možemo već profit osnovne značajka koja karakterizira ove oblik civilizacije kao što je prethodni feudalizam karakterizirao feud zemlja a ona je prije toga robovlasništvo, rob i vlasnik a šta vi mislite umjesto novi naziv društvenog uređenja koji ja se nadam da ćemo i vi i ja doživjeti u svom životu, a ne tako za inspektacije, da ga recimo, obzirom da u tom novom društvu bi trebala čovjek, njegove vrednosti da budu mjerilo i osnovno. Ja bih ga nazvao humanizam postimajući od riječi human čovjeka. Evo, pa bi volio vaše mišljenje o tome.
известна. Т.е. може ли се от будущност Европа промишлят и на други начин, осен као о хегемонистичком правилу? Хвала. These are immense questions, you know. And one, how to um, qualify the present civilization. You see, I'm not saying mode of production. Mode of production, we probably could agree easily, capitalism, profit, etc. But civilization. Now, there are some people like uh, who say, I or we are in favor of a market economy, but not market society. And this is uh, a very curious way of, and wrong way of analyzing the, the thing. Because a market society, which in fact is not a market society, it's a capitalist market society, because market. Um, a capitalist market society cannot, uh, economy cannot be but a market society. And this is where I'm saying that the United States has a religion which is money phase, M O N E Y phase, and not monotheism. <laughs> but money phase is, is unacceptable, not morally. Uh, because this uh, pseudo individual, which becomes a, an animal in the jungle, cannot survive without killing the others, um, cannot be supported. And, and, and therefore, you need to associate to monetize religion. This is why we see those curiosities. The country in which, which is closest to the jungle, the US, is simultaneously the country, as compared to European countries, for instance, where the so-called religious belief is wider. 90% or 95% of believers, you don't have this figure uh, in, in Europe. Uh, that is, the more you are monetized, the more you simultaneously you are monopolized, it's not very important, you are religious. We see things similar in the Arab countries, in the Muslim countries. Islam is developing along with the destruction of the society and uh, the invasion of that pseudo with a caricature, poor uh, caricature of monetism, of market society. Now, what is communism? Is, my definition is socialization through democracy. That is the highest level of democracy. Hmm? Uh, not the caricature or limited, at best limited, and in most cases caricature of democracy that we have. That is, now, you suggest to call it humanism. I don't mind, I will not. Uh, insult you for that change of wording yeah, at all, but humanism has been used before uh, throughout the history of philosophy and uh, I, I keep with the word, invented not by Marx but before Marx, by the first uh, victims of really existing capitalism, the early working class in Western Europe uh, in their struggle against nascent really existing capitalism which is communism before the word socialist was reintroduced. Now, the second set of questions with relate to you all. You see, I, I don't want to, I will repeat, perhaps for those who have heard me or read me, um, but I apologize for that. The European building has been built systematically in order to prevent anything other than so-called market domination, which is capitalist market domination, which is, at the present stage, monopoly, generalized monopoly market domination, making it impossible 
to move away from it. And purposely, uh, Giscard d'Estaing, with the father of this pseudo-constitution, said it. We want a constitution which will make socialism illegal. A very curious uh, concept of democracy. <laughs> the alternative is illegal. You are allowed only to have alternates of puppets to do the same. One could be called left and the other right, but to do the same. It was built very systematically. And that, you should know more about that, because perhaps the people or some people or the movement in Western Europe starts to be a little more conscious of that than in Eastern Europe because of the illusions that you get you got rid of uh, awful autocracy and you are Europeans and you, by moving into Europe all your problems will be solved. Now, that makes the idea of uh, changing Europe uh, from what it is to a better Europe let's call it, and some social liberals there, no, no more social democrats call it, social Europe is um, not going to happen. It's impossible. And therefore, you have to deconstruct that Europe. You see, it is being said, and I repeat what I said yesterday, perhaps I don't remember, if a problem is global, the solution is global. If a problem is European, the solution is European. This seems to be common sense. It is not. If a problem is global or European, it means that the setup, the global setup or the European setup, is at the origin of the problem. And therefore, it is by attacking this setup that you can correct eventually, respond to the problem which means deconstructing. Now, this is an enormous challenge for the radical left in Europe. An enormous challenge. That's an easy one. I, I do not uh, insult uh, people for not doing it. It's not an easy problem. It's the immense challenge to which uh, the left in Europe, the radical left, is confronted. Because that system is collapsing by itself because it is part of the global of globalization of the capitalist imperialist globalization and since the capitalist imperialist globalization is collapsing is perhaps a, a very strong word is being seriously attacked uh, then the European building which is part of it and which has been conceived as part of it and cannot be other than that, is in, in trouble. And within even that Europe, the Euro system, which is part of Europe, is an old, it's, it's a uh, uh, Russian uh, puppets, you know, the global, the European, the Euro. And the crisis is from uh, from, from outside, the global, and, then the, uh, and therefore the European, and therefore the Euro. Now, in such conditions, unless the radical left take the offensive courageously, and I think that if they took it, they would have an immense echo. Immense. The question of, you know, uh, I, I think that electoral majorities and so on, this can change very fast if there is an alternative suggested. If not, the wars can happen. And it's happening that it, it will break down in chaos and under the attacks of ultra-right. And this is what is happening. And not only in Croatia, not only in Hungary, but in France, in Italy, in, 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 in uh, the Netherlands, in many, many places. So, that is the, uh, the challenge. To say, I don't know what you have in mind, but to say that this Europe could be used 
This project could be used differently. I think this project cannot be used differently. And therefore has to be deconstructed to eventually construct something else. As I said yesterday, I'm not a cultural anti-European. No, not at all. Uh, uh, and I don't see... I can understand that the Europeans have something in common, more than just being all Christians. That if it is presented this way, it's uh, part of the image. Part of it, reality, but part of it. And more than they are just nations of the relatively central capitalism, which is not true for all European nations. But uh, more in common, and that after all, it would not be uh, very bad for history that they would come in, in common, and precisely in a non-hegemonic way. But nothing of this is on the agenda of the political forces, whether right or left, as they are in Europe today. You can see I mean, NATO, which is the military tool of aggression and of bombing the people, is supported by almost everybody in Europe, including uh, most of the so-called left radical parties. No, um, there are exceptions, but very modest exceptions. Eh? So, um, why, uh, while in my opinion, NATO, no intervention of NATO, nowhere and under any uh, circumstances and, and uh, pretext is acceptable. It cannot operate to the benefit of people. And it has not operated to the benefit of people neither in uh, Iraq nor in Afghanistan and to, you know, today, perhaps or tomorrow in Libya or elsewhere. So, this project has to be deconstructed. This is my view. And I think a big and dangerous illusion that it can be used differently. Uh, we'll definitely continue this discussion tomorrow. Uh, World, World Forum for Alternatives will start uh, its work tomorrow at 5, 2 p.m. Here, in, here at uh, Kino. Europa. So you're all welcome. Thank you all for coming tonight and thank you, Samir. Ne govorimo o političarima, o strankama, ali o ovaj iz Milanovića. Ali to znači da će nam se dogoditi onaj scenarij. To znači da nam se dogoditi onaj scenarij iz ekonomista. Da, da. Prositi što mi komentiramo, malo smo previše temperamentni ubi. Stalo ćemo osiromašivati, nećemo stvoriti solidarnost, opću svjetsku. 